Andy about some things I just was beginning to see, but man, I'm just so aware he's turning his face towards us, you know, and, and he's just really focusing. We have his heart, we have his ear, so listen to what he's saying, but tell him what what you need to say, you know, um, and let's not make it just our needs. Let, let's just, man, my goodness, you don't have to go and give your list to him when you just love him, you know, and you just worship him. You don't have to bring your list of, I need this, 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 and this. You just, just live in his presence, right? He, he's, he's here and he's coming. I'm, I'm just very, very aware. So, um, it was a big week for the Ruds. Right, and so thank you guys for those of you who've been praying for us. We made it through the estate sale with very minimal breakdowns and emotional trauma. We 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 did well, right? You know, it was not an easy thing, but but it went very well. Um, so thank you guys for helping. Thank you guys for praying. Thank you for your support and love because it wasn't an easy thing, but it was a graced thing. So we're we're thankful. Um, this Monday tomorrow. We don't have school. <laughs> but Supernatural School does. So tomorrow night is Supernatural School, K through 12, no school, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And after an estate sale, I say amen. you right. Perfect timing. So the, but tomorrow night we have a special guest at Supernatural School, Ziggy Sanchez. I don't know him. But, um. But with a name like Ziggy, I mean, it's like, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to, to meet him and, and to hear what he has to release to our students. And if you're not a part of the Supernatural School and you want to come anyway, you are welcome. It's $15 just to audit. And if, unless you are an, a graduate, if you graduated over the last three years, then you get to come for free anytime you want. Okay? Glory. And then the men's breakfast Fellowship is Saturday, February 1st. Amen. So just, you know, keep that open, and we'll give you more details when we figure it out. All right. All right. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to take an offering in just a moment, but before we do that, um, I want to give a couple of words of knowledge and... Uh, I actually, Wednesday night, I dreamt a couple of words of knowledge, and uh, one of them was Diana, who, or there she is, and, uh, um, but I'm going to go ahead and give that word again. There was someone else it was for who was supposed to be here, and I talked to her, and she wasn't able to make it, but I had two words of knowledge in a dream, and those of you who've been in supernatural school, you know that that's a way that you can receive a word of knowledge when in relation to physical healing, so... Uh, one of the words I had was a pain in the arm, starting here, going all the way down into the arm, and down even into the pinky, okay? And that's what Diana had. Lois Whittington also contacted me this week, and she had that same thing that began, that started Wednesday night at her job, which is when I had that dream. But if someone else has that particular affliction, I want you to stand up, if that's you, if you have pain in the arm. And it may just be for those two. All right, there's two right there. In my dream, there were several people that stood up, so that's crazy. Uh, so three of you, so you guys have that pain in the arm, okay? Heather, you too, all right. Now, is it the right arm? Right, it doesn't have to be the right arm. For you, it's the left. That's close enough, amen? Anytime somebody gives a word like that, I'm like, that's close enough, I'm in, right? All right, so those of you around them, let's, you're the prayer team. I want you to extend your hands to them. Is it okay if these people lay hands on you? Okay, so we're going to pray. Um, you're not a spectator. You're releasing faith to these guys, these ladies. Amen? So, Father, whatever the source of this pain is, we command it to go right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that, that healing would flow. Let it begin however you want to do it. But, Lord, we just pray that it would just flow down through these arms in Jesus' name all throughout uh, any pain. We command it to go right now extend your hand to heal in the name of jesus hallelujah all right now check it out check it out those of you that have that pain okay thank you lord okay how's your pain good 
Any imp- anybody experiencing some improvement in the arm? Any improvement here? Yeah. Amen. So thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask for more. We just thank you for what you're doing for Lisa. Let it increase now in the name of Jesus. All that inflammation go. Father, anything that's affecting the nervous system, we command it to go in Jesus' name. Let healing flow. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. This Lisa here. Lisa, what's going on? She can feel some activity. Is it good activity? Okay, good. Amen. So let healing flow. Heather, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Okay, amen. So, Father, we just bless what you're doing. We command all pain, affliction, and infirmity to go. Now, you guys keep praying for these that are standing. Anybody who have an issue with their tonsils? Anybody have an issue with their tonsils? Anyone? That's a strange word, but... Okay. Right here? She have an issue with her tonsils? Okay. Both of you guys, both of you ladies. Okay, so... Any inflammation or infection or anything going on? Uh, we have strep throat. You have strep throat. Okay, so, all right. <laughs> Heal them, Lord, and keep everybody else healed too, right? So, <laughs> Father, we just ask that you touch these daughters right now in the name of Jesus. Let healing flow. All infirmity, strep, infection go right now in Jesus' name. Father, we command this affliction to go. total healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Extend your hand and touch those tonsils, those throats in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Okay. Anything going on? Anything happening here? She's just like, what's going on? Right? Okay. How are you ladies with the, the arms? Good? Relief? Tingling? Okay. That's all good. So we just, those of you that receive prayer, I just want you to keep receiving throughout the service, okay? Hallelujah. Let the presence of God, the hand of God just continue to touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's, as they're praying, then just continue to let God touch them. And Diana, Diana was healed when we prayed for her in the office and she started telling what she had on Thursday and Jamie looked at me and she goes, hello, it's your word of knowledge, right? And I snapped back into reality and we prayed for her and she, (laughs) I need help, (laughs) y'all, right? So praise God, I've got it. I got a lot of help and I need a lot of help. So praise God. Now, uh, let's continue to believe as we take an offering, amen. This continues to remain a Spiritual activity, worship, giving, um, obedience, and you can always give online at globalharvestchurch.co. If you want to have cash giving, uh, raise your hand, and we'll make sure that someone gets you an envelope so you can keep a record. But let's all stand together, and let's make this offering declaration. Hallelujah. Ready? I am powerful, and what I believe changes the world. So today I declare... God is in a good mood. He loves me all the time. Nothing can separate me from his love. Jesus' blood paid for everything. I will tell nations of what he has done. I am important. How he made me is amazing. I was designed for worship. My mouth establishes praise to silence the enemy. Everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone, and with God... Nothing is impossible. Amen? So bring those gifts. We don't pass a plate. We just come and give in the the chest in obedience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. That is a good declaration. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're thankful to the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we just honor 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. And we're thankful for that servant of God that God raised up to bring, bring transformation to our society. And we honor his legacy. And we continue to pray that those things that he dreamed and declared as a prophetic re reformer would come forth in the earth. Amen. So we honor him. Praise God. All right. At this time, we dismiss the kids to go to their program. Hallelujah. And that they'll have a, a good morning. Praise God. God is good. Some are more excited than others, but it's all good. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, I just want to kind of continue what we were talking about last week and the reality of what happens when heaven invades earth. Amen. And uh, we were looking at uh, what happens when an open heaven comes forth. And you guys realize, and we talked about this last week, but we're living under an open heaven, yes, right? Now, sometimes we don't realize that we are. <laughs> it's just like, you know, Dwayne was talking this morning in worship about Jacob, and he was like, God is in this place, and I didn't even know it. Right, and sometimes we don't understand that we're we're living under an open heaven, and God's waiting for us to partner with Him to see His kingdom come, Amen. And that's such an important reality. So I want to read a little bit this morning, and let's turn to Acts chapter two. And I'm actually, I usually don't do this; occasionally I will, but I'm going to break out the Passion Translation, get a little little progressive here this morning. I usually read out of the New American Standard, but I want to read out of the Passion. So um, let's just start reading in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. On the day Pentecost was being fulfilled, all the disciples were to gathered together in one place. And suddenly they heard the sound of a violent blast of wind. It was like Oklahoma yesterday. <laughs> Rushing into the house from out of the heavenly realm. The roar of the wind was so overpowering, it was all anyone could bear. I think that's bear, or is it here? No, it's bear. Sorry, I might need some glasses. Then all at once, a pillar of fire appeared before their eyes. It separated into tongues of fire that engulfed each one of them. They were all filled and equipped with the Holy Spirit and were inspired to speak in tongues, empowered by the Spirit to speak in languages they had never learned. Now at that time, there were Jewish worshipers who had immigrated from many different lands to live in Jerusalem. When the people of the city heard the roaring sound, crowds came running to where it was coming from, stunned over what was happening, because each one could hear the disciples speaking in his or her own language. Bewildered, they said to one another, aren't these all Galileans? So how is it that we hear them speaking in our own languages? We are northeastern Iranians, northwestern Iranians, Elamites, and those from Mesopotamia. Judea, East Central Turkey, the coastal areas of the Black Sea, Asia, North Central Turkey, Southern Turkey, Egypt, Libyans who are neighbors of Cyrene, visitors from all over the Roman Empire, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking of God's mighty wonders in our own dialects. They all stood there dumbfounded and astonished, saying to one another, What is this phenomenon? But others poked fun at them and said, they're just drunk on new wine. That sounds like some of our services, right? Hallelujah. But they're, <laughs> sorry, that was the mighty rushing wind sound effect. So this, this open heaven gets initiated over Jerusalem with the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And last week we talked about, you know, that process of Jesus bringing in that heavenly realm and then and then there comes this moment when heaven opens over Jerusalem. And 
that 120 were all baptized into his power in order to carry the fullness of God and the fullness of the kingdom into all the earth. Amen. Suddenly, everything changes. And the sound of heaven carried a heavenly reality into earth, and it changed an atmosphere over a city that just weeks ago had crucified Jesus. So suddenly, the atmosphere completely changes, and it was because there was an open heaven. And it was because this baptism of his presence came upon 120 people. And suddenly, because 120 people partnered with God and facilitated and said, okay, God, here we are. We don't know what you're going to do. They positioned themselves for something God had never done before. Isn't that crazy? They were like, God, we don't know what this is going to look like. And I love that account and how they say that, that suddenly this pillar of fire and there had been pillars of fire that had touched the body, the people of God over centuries. But this pillar of fire comes into their midst and separates, and suddenly they get baptized into his presence. And we think sometimes church gets freaky. We have a total biblical precedent for that, right? And they begin to declare the praises. It says in one translation, they begin to declare the mighty works of God. And they probably didn't even know what they were saying. But I think not only was this, did this atmosphere suddenly change because the Spirit of God was poured out on all flesh, but as they begin to release declarations of the mighty works of God that everyone heard in their own language, doesn't that make it more real when you're talking about Iranians and those from the coast of the Black Sea, which is places like Ukraine, right? And they begin to release that, and there was suddenly, because they begin to participate in the outpouring of the Spirit, suddenly everything over the city changed. And many people begin to say, what must we do to be saved, right? And it came because of an open heaven. Hallelujah. Now, it's very interesting because not only was there this open heaven that came, the people of God, there was an empowering of the Holy Spirit that also came with it. And it's so interesting because you see, after this, in verse 14, it says, Peter stood up with the 11 apostles and shouted to the crowd. Now, keep in mind, Peter just weeks ago, had denied Jesus, right? And a servant girl begins to say, weren't you with him? And the man of faith, the most brash, crazy guy that followed Jesus, when some little servant girl says, weren't you with Jesus? He said, I don't know who you're talking about. That's not me. And, but then suddenly, this empowering of the Spirit comes, and this guy who had just weeks before denied Jesus, who's standing in front of some mockers, yeah, he's just drunk, y'all. Right? Who is this guy? He's drunk. These people are drunk. They are crazy. But Peter stands up and says, listen, y'all. He said, y'all. I know he did. He was from southern Jerusalem, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and it took something for Peter. How many of you like to stand up to mockers? You all say, yeah. Some of y'all don't. Come on. Will does. Will would do it, right? But here's this mocking, and he stands up, and because he's suddenly empowered by the Holy Spirit. And not only is he empowered by the Holy Spirit, but he's standing under an open heaven. Now, it takes both to see the kingdom come. Because we're all living under an open heaven, even in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Even in places like Love County, 
Marietta, Thackerville, Medill, right? Sulphur, Davis, Hilton even. Right? <laughs> Ratliff City, Fox, all those places. Those places are all under an open heaven. But what do we do? We're like, well, it's just too hard here. You know, there's too many meth labs in this city. Right? There's too many Freemasons in this area. There's too many witches out here. Don't you know there's more witches in this area than any place in America? So? All right. Come on, y'all. Where's your faith? Right? And those things are reality. And there's intercession that it takes to overcome those things. But what happens when we realize that we're standing under an open heaven and we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, we begin to release the declarations of God. We begin to release the worship of God. We begin to preach the gospel. We begin to declare the mighty works of God. And sometimes even if we don't even know what we're saying. You know, we were praying this morning. You know, we gather for... Uh, prayer at 10 o'clock, and I, I just had everybody praying in tongues for a few minutes. We don't outgrow that. That's something that we don't outgrow. It's just like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people are like, well, I don't know that I need the baptism. You do. <laughs> you just do. That was the, you know, can, can you be born again without the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yes, but why would you want to be? <laughs> and why would you not want to pray in tongues? I know it's freaky. It still freaks me sometimes when I pray in tongues. It freaks me out. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, but there's something that it releases of the glory and the presence of God. That's a whole other sermon, right? But, we're, but these, these 120, they were baptized and it's really funny to me that people begin to, to mock what was going on. Now, if, if this was the modern-day church, you know what we would do? Oh, let's keep that in the back room. Because someone might get offended, and they might not bow their head and pray a prayer, and we never see them again. Because sometimes what we think scares the lost will actually draw them. I mean, I've been in moves of God. I can remember in the mid-90s when the river was flowing, right, and crazy stuff was happening, and we'd have visitors come to our church there in Shawnee just to see what was going on. And ultimately, lost people were better with it than Christians. Because sometimes it's only we're only afraid of the supernatural when we've been taught to be afraid of it. Right? And, and, you know, if we have to do gymnastics theologically to get people born again, Jesus never did that. Jesus made it really hard for people. Right? Now, I don't know if they had a Hebrews coffee shop set up that followed the disciples. And I'm all for comfort, y'all. Aren't you glad that we don't have, like, wood benches and stuff like that I'm for comfort that's cool you know we want heat and air and all that and I, I want stuff convenient but Jesus was like if you're not going to drink my flesh and eat my blood and drink my blood don't follow me well that's a weird thing to say isn't it yeah you know and he's, he said all these things and, and sometimes we're so afraid to let the spirit of God move it, when it, it will actually draw, he will actually draw people. If you study revival history, there will always manifestations of some sort in every major move of God. And it brought people. Even though sometimes they came to mock, many of them ended up getting saved because there was not only something of God that they saw. And some of them would do stuff like go into trances and see hell. Nobody was preaching about hell. 
And they'd go into trances and see hell, and they'd come out of those trances born again. Wow. I mean, Roland and Heidi Baker, some kids that know nothing, have had encounters where they saw hell and saw heaven. And they came out of those things born again. Or they would encounter Jesus in their dreams and their visions, and he'd say, um, don't, don't do this anymore. Wow, that's crazy. It suddenly got very sober in here. Oh my gosh, we talked about hell. Right? But that's a reality we have to understand and, and not just deny it. Now, that's not the point of my message, right? But sometimes, you know, there's this empowering and there's this outpouring that, that begins to draw people. And, and pre- he, Peter preaches under this open heaven. And suddenly, the anointing that had been on one man... Jesus suddenly is on 120, and Peter, who got anointed for that moment, because didn't Jesus say, Peter, I prayed for you, and one day your faith won't fail, and you're going to stand up and strengthen the brethren, right? And so Peter's anointed for that moment because not only had he been with Jesus, but there was a call on his life to preach the gospel as an evangelistic apostle. And suddenly that anointing that was on the 120, 3,000 people get saved. And suddenly that same anointing and presence that Jesus brought forth in an open heaven is suddenly on over 3,000 people in one of the world's most international cities at that time. Right? Heaven invaded earth. Right, And a group of people partnered with the work of God, the presence of God, and the anointing of God. And they began to, to speak in a heavenly language of things that they didn't understand, but it was alive in them. And their declarations began to change a city. They were praising and speaking mysteries of God over a city that rejected Jesus. Right? Did you know you have a great call in this city today, in this region, in whatever city or community God has placed you in? And the Lord said many things to us through multiple prophets about a 50-mile radius that, that we're impacting. And I, I just think, and here's what I think. If we stirred that well, what happens when you stirred well what God gives you? He gives you more. So we have a call to stir the presence and the glory of God in our community. And sometimes you look at your city and your community and your region, and I do it, and you think, Lord, they're rejecting you. They're rejecting what you're doing. You know what the answer is? Just to begin to declare the praises, the mighty works of God. Begin to declare who he is to the atmosphere over your house, over your life, over your family, over your neighborhood. You may want to start praying in tongues a lot more than you do. You know? Be careful maybe where you do it, right? (laughs) If you do it at the McDonald's drive-thru, they might freak out. Of course, they probably need it, right? So does your food, right? <laughs> if you can call it that, right? So they begin, <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure, right? And, but they begin to declare something over a city that caused a shift in the atmosphere. And so this language of heaven poured out of their lips, out of their mouth. Now, you know, we talk about this baptism of the Spirit, okay? Now, what can it be compared to? First of all, It can be compared to wine. Right? Sorry. Sometimes, you know, my Baptist background just likes, no, you can't talk about wine. But, you know, and the but here's the thing, wine influences. Okay? Some of you have experienced the influence of wine. Now don't raise your hand. Not today, right? Just the new wine. The new wine, 
right? The wine begins to bring an influence. It begins to bring an authority in the earth. And this new wine that they partook of begin to influence them, and it began to influence the very atmosphere of heaven, right? Word tells us, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Isn't it interesting that they link those together, right? The wine of his presence. And I tell you, we've got a lot of people in the nations of the earth partaking of the wine of immorality at this moment. The wine, the new wine, the wine of his presence, it's a lot better. It's a lot better with a lot better long-lasting effects, right? Because it begins to influence everything that we do. Now, another, the Holy Spirit is also... The baptism of the Spirit is linked to fire, okay? Now, fire, all right, it it ignites hearts, right? There's there's an igniting with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Peter got ignited, right? The 120 got ignited, okay? And, and, you know, and and there's this burning, there's this presence, and fire spreads, Right? You know, isn't that what's happened in Australia? You know, these these fires. Now, thank God for the rain. As believers begin to pray all over the world, the, 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 this record rain has started coming to put those things out. You realize we have authority in the earth? Right? And uh, this, this, this fire of the presence of God. And, and, and you know what? If your fire is going down today... Here's the good news. You can get reignited. You can just ask him, God, Father, reignite. Holy Spirit, reignite in me the fire of your presence. Amen. He's he's more than willing to do that. Right? He wants to do that. And, And as we begin to understand that there's an igniting of his presence, you'll get refreshed. Right? You'll get refreshed by that, and you'll begin to understand that when it comes to the things that we do in the kingdom, it's driven by His presence. Right? When you get touched by His presence, suddenly all the things that... And you know, I think we do need to have a greater understanding of servanthood. Right? And all that. But have you ever been doing things when... Um, you're just doing them because you know it's the right thing to do. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But what happens when you get ignited by his presence and you fall in love with him? When, when that influence of the Holy Spirit that's in us and upon us, that, that wine, that fire, that living water, when it begins to flow through your life, suddenly we become a servant out of love and passion and relationship. And you know what? It makes things easier. Right? And when we begin to serve, not because it's just the right thing to do, it's what we do in ministry. No, you're serving because you're ignited by His presence. You're serving and you're following because you're ignited with love for Him. Right? Lovers get a lot more done than servants. They should. Right? Because our hearts are in it, right? And, and everything that we do flows out of his presence. It flows out of loving him. Have you ever been, I remember when I first got baptized in the Spirit, and I, you know, uh, I, I, I was, a, even from a young age, I would, you know, faithful church attendance, giving, trying to read my Bible, right? And then suddenly, I get ignited by the Holy Spirit. And suddenly I'm like, oh, right? Suddenly everything comes alive, right? Even music that I had hated, I suddenly liked. Back in the 80s, y'all remember listening to Phil Driscoll? And I just thought, oh, he's terrible. 
I, my roommate would listen to him at Oklahoma Baptist University, and I was just like, why are you listening to this dude? He can't sing. The trumpet's okay. Because he played the trumpet, right? And then, and then I got baptized in the Spirit, and I'd, he'd start playing, and I'd be like, oh! What changed? He's singing better. There, there's presence on him that wasn't there before. No. No, I got ignited. I, I fell in love with Jesus in a different way. I started reading the Bible and I was just like, For God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. So beautiful. Right? That's what happens when that fire, that, you know, and the wine. I've heard sometimes that things are, are funnier if you've had wine. I've heard that. Is that true? Here's a brave one. You've heard right. <laughs> it's an influencer, right? Isn't it funny that I've heard <laughs> that alcohol produces different responses in different people? Some people become really generous. Drinks for everybody. <laughs> or they get really happy. Right? Or loud. Some of y'all need a little new wine. Maybe some of you have had too much. I don't know. <laughs> but the presence and the glory of God is it, it becomes the one thing. It becomes the one thing that we set before us. God, I ask of one thing, that I may dwell in your courts. That I would dwell in your presence. Some of us have gotten so familiar with the presence of God that we don't understand how precious it is. And we take His presence for granted. Right? And we need to make sure, God, I'm focused on the one thing, right? And when I focus on your presence, when I focus on your love, when I focus on what you took me out of, when I focus on how good you are, I can get up this morning and do everything that you've called me to do, right? Because I'm keeping my eyes on the one thing. And sometimes what happens is we put that one thing aside. And we do what we know we have to do. And by the end of the day, we're like, Lord, I can't do it tomorrow. I love what Heidi Baker says. You know, she says, I have to spend hours in His presence every morning just so I can get up and do everything He's called me to do. And that's a hard thought. I don't... I don't know about you. I don't have four or five hours in the morning generally to soak. Because, yeah. But then Heidi's like, and I, I do that when I can, and then I get up and I go care for the broken. I go and feed the hungry, and I go and love the lost. Right? But it flows out of the one thing. So... There's this reality of we're living under this open heaven, but he's empowered us to move in it. Now, it's interesting if you continue to look through the book of Acts. You know, when you start reading in chapter 3, sometimes we read and we think that that happened the next day. Right? But that may have been weeks, months, or years later. But... The church at Jerusalem, they begin to cultivate this atmosphere of heaven in the city. Right? Now, it wasn't completely shifted. They were still suffering persecution from the Pharisees and some of the religious crowd, even though many, many, many priests and Pharisees were getting born again. 
and joining Christianity. And there's this, there's this shift that's happening in the city. Isn't it crazy what's going on with Iran? That Iran just continues to have an incredible revival and awakening. Right? It's so powerful what's happening. And, you know, some of us heard Robbie Dawkins weeks ago talk about the Iranian people have been praying for war. Now, I'm not justifying anything, y'all, but I'm saying they want their government to shift. Right? And there are so many dynamics in all that, and my point in this isn't being political, but this, that even, even as this atmosphere begins to shift in Jerusalem and, and people are being added to the church daily because of the open heaven and because of the empowering of the Spirit in the life of the believers. And so all this is happening. And in Acts chapter 3, you know, Peter and John, they, they pray for this guy, and he, he's, he's lame, and they, he, he gets healed, and the whole city sees it and hears about it. So, of course, the Antichrist spirit rises up and begins to persecute them, right? Even though there was an atmosphere of an open heaven, the enemy's like, I don't like this. I'm going to stir some stuff up against the people of God. Here's the thing. If we're moving in power, we're moving with the Spirit, don't be surprised when the enemy tries to stir stuff up. Right? But I love, you know, the, the disciples, um, what their response was, they cry out for more. Lord, give us mo more boldness. Give us more, more presence. Now, wait a minute. I thought they were empowered and living under an open heaven. Why would they ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit again? Here's the deal. If we're doing it right, we're going to need more. And they begin to ask for more of his presence. They begin to ask in verse... Let's just look at this. Some of y'all are like, well, I, does that really say that? Yeah, Acts chapter 4 beginning in verse 29. Let's start reading in, let's see, where are we here? It said, yeah, Acts 4.29, So now, Lord, listen to their threats to harm us. Empower us. Didn't they get empowered in Acts chapter 2? But they're asking again, Lord, empower us as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch out your hand of power through us. Isn't that powerful? Stretch out your hand of power through us. Put us on like a glove, God. Right? Put us on like a glove. Stretch your hand of power out through us to heal and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son Jesus. And at that moment, the earth shook beneath them, causing the building they were in to tremble. And each one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they proclaimed the word of God with unrestrained boldness. If we're doing this right... We must get filled often. Right? There's one baptism, but there's a whole bunch of fillings. Right? And so as we pour out, when we live our lives when we're pouring out, and when we live our lives when we're giving away, right, you're going to need to get refilled. Right? And I found that in the, in the pouring out... In the giving, in the praying, in the contending for things, our, our capacity for more increases. Right? Our capacity to, to steward and host the presence of God gets bigger. I can remember the first time I went on a trip, an international trip with Global Awakening, and Randy Clark, and we went to the nation of Brazil. I can remember at the end of that trip, and one of the things about those trips that's so great is they do a lot of impartation. At the beginning, at the end, and we just concluded, we had our debriefing meeting, which was a wild time. 
<laughs> and I can remember walking through the airport just being like, oh, there's something different with me. There's, there's this increased glory. There's this increased presence. And, you know, because you know what? We were designed for increase. And you know how you increase something? You give it away. I mean, in the Christian school last week, we've been talking about sowing and reaping. You want to reap a great... Now, don't, again, y'all don't get nervous. I'm not about to take an offering. <laughs> right? But you, you want to grow in something? Give it away. Give it away, and God will pour more back. And so as we begin to pour out of the Holy Spirit, as we allow Him to put us on like a glove and extend His hand through us. This morning as we were praying for people, you, the Lord was extending His hand through you. Now, God can heal people without us ever laying hands on them. But you know what? He likes to do it. Isn't that so awesome that God's like, I want to do it through you. <coughs> Whether you think you have a healing gift or not, the Lord wants to extend his hand through you. Amen. He wants, he said, man, I want to use them. I want to put them on like a glove. I want to extend my hand to release healing, signs, wonders, miracles, prophecy, prosperity, deliverance, kindness, goodness, peace, gentleness, self-control, shifting atmospheres, saving people, delivering people. I want to release the atmosphere of heaven through their lives. And not just through one, and not just through two or three, not just through me, not just through the leadership team, not just through the worshipers, but through all of us. He wants to be that, that power. He wants to release that glory through each one of us. And, and these believers understood that. Amen. They were continually dependent upon him. Peter didn't say, you know what, I just healed this lame guy. <laughs> right? I, I got it going on. Right? I'm sending out my newsletter. I got it on my business card. Right? You know what he did? Lord, hear their threats. We ask you to empower us again. Fill us again, Lord. Extend your hand through us again. Put us on like a glove. Let the light of your face shine on us. Right? Because those, his favor is linked to his face. Right? Outpouring is released, to, is released through those things. Amen? And so, there's this outpouring that he wants to give to us. And it's it's... You know, in the baptism of the Spirit, the empowering of the Spirit, it's not just so that, now hear what I say, it's not just so that we would be more effective in ministry. That's what happens. But why? Why are we more effective in ministry? Because it's really about intimacy. It's really about knowing Him and loving Him, right? And that's what it's about. And it, it produces this intimacy at the greatest level. Isn't that what happened? Weren't the disciples already doing miracles before they got baptized in the Spirit? Weren't they already casting out demons before they got baptized in the Spirit? But suddenly, what what's, says, I'm going to, Joel, I'm going to pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. They're, everybody's going to get immersed in power. Everybody's going to get immersed in revelation. Everybody's going to get immersed in what I'm doing and hearing my voice. And not only hearing me, because you're all prophets and priests in the new covenant, right? 
but they're going to declare what I'm saying. They're going to give and declare and praise and give testimony about the mighty things of God in known and unknown languages, and atmospheres over cities are going to shift. That's your call today. No matter what you're called to do, you may be a single mother. You may be a mother with a lot of kids, and you're like, boy, I need a break. (laughs) (laughs) Or you may be running your own business, and you're so busy, and you've got two or three phones, and, you know, or you may be a leader of a ministry, but no matter who you are, you're called to declare the mighty works, and the mighty deeds of God. Amen? You can change your world, right, as you release the glory of God. And as we're baptized in the Spirit and we keep that one thing before us, our labor becomes a byproduct of our love. Right? I'll do a lot more for Jamie than I will other people. Number one, because I'm scared of her. She's agreeing, right? But it's because I love her, right? And, and, you know, that labor of love. I'll do things for my kids, right? That they're like, we're going to hold you accountable for what you just said, right? Because I love them, right? Our our lives, our ministry, our, our everything that we live for, even those religious things, that are good. Because, y'all, discipline is a good thing. And I've preached about that before. Right? Spiritual dif- disciplines produce fruit, but we do the discipline because of love. Right? Because we know Him, and we want to know Him more. And we're living under that open heaven. Hallelujah. I want to read a verse here. Let's turn to... Proverbs sixteen fifteen. And again, I'm reading from the Passion, so it's going to sound a little bit different. Life giving light streams from the presence of a king. In his favor is showered upon those who please him. Right? I want to say that again. Isn't that good? Life giving light streams from the presence of a king, and his favor is showered upon those who please him. Right? So this this verse links God's face and his favor without pouring. Right? Man, I, I, I want to know him. I I don't want to just know about him. We've had too many people in churches throughout history who knew about him. But did they know him in intimacy? Did they experience him? Did they experience his presence? Did they know his face? And when those things happen, not only do we have revelation of who he is, he pours out his favor. I mean, do you want to live in the favor and presence of God? Right? I do. And I, and I want our, our city and our region and our nation, I want us to live under the favor of God, right? As Jamie was saying, she's just like, man, his face is really turned towards us. Now, isn't his face always turned toward us? Yes. But there's something about when we purpose to know him. There's something about when we purpose to move with Him. There's something about when we say and we begin to cry out, God, in our city, in our region, right? South Central Oklahoma, North Texas, we purpose to partner with Him for an outpouring. God's given word after word not just to us in this church, but many others, about an outpouring of the Spirit, a move of God, an awakening in this region. 
Let it be, God. Let the light of your face shine on us. Let's just begin to lift up our voices to him. Lord, we ask you today, God, I thank you that we've been baptized. We've been baptized into your purposes, God. Father, thank you that we're filled with your spirit. But Lord, we ask for more today. God, we ask for a greater outpouring. God, we ask, Father, that you fill us again. Father, that you fill us again. God, we've been pouring out. Lord, we've been pouring out. We've been believing. We've been crying out. And this morning, Father, I thank you, God, that you've purposed that this city, this, this region, Lord, would be a city on a hill, that it would be ignited by your presence and by your glory. Father, there would be revival and awakening and transformation throughout this region. Father, we thank you for it today. I thank you, God, today that you've gathered. Lord, there's not, I don't think there's 120 of us here, but Father, I thank you that there's something that you're pouring out in our lives and through us. God, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We know you, but we want to know you in greater measure. Lord, we've been empowered by you, but Lord, we ask for a fresh filling in all of our lives. Lord, let there be a fresh filling in all of our lives. In this moment, at home, in the days ahead. But Lord, I ask that you just encounter us in a fresh way. God, we want to do everything from intimacy. We want to do everything because we've been ignited and baptized in fire. Father, let the wine of your presence, Lord, we drink of your presence this morning. We drink of your presence this morning, Lord, that you would release those rivers of living water through us. Father, we thank you for your glory. Father, we thank you that you're here, but you're filling this place. Lord, give us a greater revelation of your face and your heart today. God, in Jesus' name, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just touch people throughout the day. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do tomorrow night in Supernatural School. Thank you for your servant, Ziggy. Father, what he's doing, Father God, in Oklahoma City and Edmond. Father, the revival that he's been a part of in Ohio these last days. Father, thank you for what you're going to do. And you're just taking us deeper into a greater revelation, Lord, of who you are. Greater revelation of the face of Jesus. Holy Spirit, bring illumination and revelation to us all in these next days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll go home and drink of the new wine. <laughs> amen. Now, if you <laughs> remember Ziggy tomorrow night, that's at 630. Um, if you need prophetic ministry, we will have a prophetic team here. Um, if you need um, prayer for physical healing, how are those of you that receive prayer? How are you doing? Good? Amen. Lisa? Lisa P., good. Heather? Amen. Man, those with the, with the throat issue, how are you doing? Amen. Praise God. So if you need further prayer, come and see the prayer team. So bless you guys. Have a great day. We'll see you throughout the week if in next week. Amen. Bless you.